Uh-huh. Dude, I love that so much. How you doing, my brother? All right, man. Uh, wow, what's up with you? Oh, just hanging out in the house, man. I'm just chilling. What, what's up with you? You look kind of like my babies behind used to look back in the day. Are you saying I have a butt face? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not saying you have a butt face. I'm saying you have a butt face. <laughs> Thanks, brother. You know, I made the, the the drastic mistake that most men make when they try to clean themselves up a little bit. So I'm trying to trim in all the stuff, making it look all pretty. And I notched, and then I notched, and then I tried to even, and I notched, notched. It's like, got to just take it off at that point. That's why I don't notch. I just leave it. Right? The great function. <laughs> you looking good, brother. Camera looks great tonight. The light, it doesn't look all shiny. I've got a different camera, so it's not just like whoosh, washed out. I feel like I'm glowing. You look like you're glowing. Hi, I'm glowing. I get my 43rd trimester of pregnancy. <laughs> yes. All right, so you guys are in the hangout here with Robbie and I, and we've got a great guest tonight, but first we've got to go over a couple things. We uh, we ordered some t-shirts today, Robbo. Uh, so I heard. So we ordered a bunch of the Hangout Live t-shirts. There's the front so you can see. And let's see the back, shall we? Oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, it's so pretty. So uh, they should be in in about two weeks. We'll be selling the t-shirts. You'll also get a picture of these two people. Oh, oh this guy over here. Yeah, yeah. You'll get a picture of us, autograph signed, and all that fun stuff. So if you want one, leave your comment, and one of the producers will reach out to you to get all your information, your sizing, mailing address, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. All right, stick around for after tonight's show to find out who else we have coming up. Yeah, we'll let you know. We got a lot of guests coming up. We'll let you know at the end of the hour. All right. I think we get after it, man. We got Joey Allen from Warrant. Joey Allen's going to be a great time. Joey's a really cool guy, and uh, he's going to have a lot of rock and roll history that he can teach us firsthand. That's it. It's going to be cool. Let's bring him in. We got Let's Joey go. Allen of Warrant. J -j -j Joey. There what he is. What's up, brother? Uh, it is. Hey, dude. You are live on the Hangout, man. You got your drink handy? <clears throat> I got a uh, water. Oh, <laughs> we're all doing the alcohol. <laughs> Dude, it's it's six o'clock somewhere, right, Robbie? That's right. <laughs> right on, man. Well, welcome to the Hangout Live, dude. We appreciate you joining us here and uh, look forward to tonight's show. I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Appreciate the opportunity, guys. It's kind of like being on the road, but not. Right. <laughs> Got a drink with some bros, and you know it is what it is, right? Yeah, Absolutely. it's looking like we might might not be on the road for quite a while, apparently, right? <laughs> After this weekend, yeah, maybe 2021, but maybe 2021 we'll just do a few hundred shows, you know? Right? A few hundred, you're gonna get after it, brother. Dude, I, I, you know, have have uh, what's that? Got love for sale? Have love will travel, whatever they say. <laughs> <laughs> couple beers a couple tacos you'll be there right love tacos bro i know you do my brother i know you do as you can see the thin the thin joey allen the thinner yeah well you're looking good man i've shed like 120 pounds since the last time i saw you this thing growing from my chin if i keep on pulling it down it goes way down there look at robbie <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's only about that long is that it yeah you just had a birthday, so it's great. Is what I got a little blonde left in there, but it is what it is. Right. Well, let's go, dude. I'm enjoying it. Nice. No nice manscaping the chin. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you knew what we were talking about on pre-show there. Uh -oh. I just, what were you guys talking about? I butchered mine, man. I, I normally have a pretty nice little deal, and I butchered it and had to shave all the way off. Now I look like baby face. You look like a baby. A baby. <laughs> the drip like looks like a, a baby man. <laughs> the wee man, baby man. <laughs> the shiny baby face. 
That's it. So, Joey, we, we've had a chance to work together a couple of times. In fact, we just had you with Robbie with uh, Jack Russell's Great White. We had Warrant and Firehouse out here in West Texas in last October. It was a good time. We were supposed to be there earlier and it rained. And then we, I remember it was just a great night. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun night. It was a great night. And and I can't wait to do it again. Of course, we just saw that. Uh, uh oh. Well, there's yeah, there you a, go. There's a shot of the show, the stage that night. Hey, that looks like a few too many seats right in there. Right. <laughs> Bad picture. <laughs> All right. Got a Everybody was up partying, there, right? <laughs> Everybody was up partying. So I uh, see we just saw the uh, the guinea pig take the uh, the sword for doing a live show here. The the other other white meat, the other great white, decided yeah. to perform live. Yeah, I, I mean, um, don't want to rag on anybody. I get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've all taken um, precautions to stay at home and take care of our families and if you go out and have to go out and buy food which food and booze which is about it then i see robbie's been either ordering wine in or has been hitting a wine shop so same thing but if we go out and do that's it that's all we're doing you know and we're going out with masks on just to be polite to everybody and do the right thing and try to help mitigate this this nightmare and part of it's not doing shows you know right. because no matter what happens um, you know, when people get together, man, the nature of the beast is to have fun and every, I mean, even if you're thinking about socially distancing for five minutes, it's going to be out the window. The first beer you get in. Yeah. Yep. The reality is, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, this thing's not going away with heat like the flu does, you know, and, and, uh, maybe this herd mentality, who knows? I've read up on it too much and yeah. all kinds of vaccines floating around and, you know, we're just all about keeping people healthy. So I know Robbie and, and, and Jack are the same, those guys in that band and most every band out there. So those guys, you know, no disrespect, not talking shit on anybody. They did what they did. And, you know, I'm sure there was some, some, I know the guys that are in that, you know, play with Mark, you know, aren't stupid guys, you know, they're all smart guys. So I don't know what they were thinking, you know? Well, I, I think the guinea pig has, has done it, and I think uh, it didn't go over well. So now we know it's probably going to be 2021 before. Much yeah, you know what? Everybody with a laptop has an opinion, and, and yeah, you know, that's cool, whatever. You know, hopefully, you know, people that have a laptop and can get online would like to help situations out, not be divisive or not be shitty about somebody's decision to work. You right. know, I get it, you know. Right. Um, and I'm just happy it wasn't my band, you know. Um, that's all I can say, you know. And and we're gonna do shows with with Robbie and Jack, and we're gonna do shows with Mark and 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 yeah. Audie and, and Scott and those guys, and and we all get along, you know. Yeah. Um, so it is what it is. So hopefully nobody gets hurt, and when we can rock again, we all rock again. Yep. That's it, brother. That's yeah. it. It's kind of hit ho close to home here. My neighbors got COVID-19. My landlord's got COVID-19. I've been feeling rough for about the last week. It's scary, but you just got to use your head and, and wear a mask and keep distant and wipe things down and let's get through this crap so we can get back to rocking and being in person again. Yeah, dude, I just, I just, uh, let's get personal. I just had a birthday and went and had the old man physical and, and I talked to my doctor and, and he's like, look, you know, while he had his finger up my ass, I'm like, look. <laughs> is this is this a real thing you know should i be worried about this and he goes what are you talking about are you talking about my finger up your ass or you're talking about COVID 19 and i said i'm talking about COVID 19 bro <laughs> yeah. and uh he said well good because yes it's real and my finger's not real and it's that part's <laughs> over with and you're good and anyway, um, was it wrong that you kept backing up to into it or Dude, a little, a little levity in a, in a serious time, you know, we just, you know, it's a for real thing and, and any conspiracy theorist that says it's not. I mean, if you look, if you're a smart person and you look at the fact that China relies on our business so much and our consumption so much, yeah. there's no way they planted this thing. This isn't a, this is, they, they fucked up. Okay, and didn't talk about it for six weeks where they could have and helped everybody out probably a little bit from what I read, but 
right it's no conspiracy i mean it just is what it is it's unfortunate and nobody that that relies on our economy that much for their economy is going to do something like that to us if anybody thinks they that that's happening they're insane and that that's all i want to talk about for politics how's that there we go there we go so joey let, let, let's go way back robbie i know has got a ton of stuff that he's He's well, got- you know, before before we do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention one of my favorite Joey Allen moments, and it was uh, I want to think it I think it was M3, pretty <laughs> sure it was a big stage and there was a bunch of bands, and I was watching from stage right. Joey's all the way on stage left, 60 feet away. I'm sitting over there watching the band, and Joey has his shirikan. I guess what you call a shirikan. Yep. And he takes it from probably 60 feet away, and I watch this thing in slow motion coming, and it was an episode of Kung Fu. <laughs> no, I was like, how the? F-? I swear, I was like, how the hell? He's, you know, he must have really worked at that. So, I mean, I try doing that, and I throw my pick, and it goes like this, and it drops about four feet in front of me. Somebody's out there, I'm like trying to look cool. Like, so I went and started practicing, trying to get it down. But I mean, I swear, it flew sixty feet and ah, yeah. right out of an episode of Kung Fu. I kid you not. I'm looking. I'm looking. Hey, Robbie, when you can take the pebble from my hand, brother. You know, right? Hey, we're breaking out some David Carradine. Um, I probably got lucky, dude. I used to actually back in the day have these heavier picks, and and those things would fly as far as like the soundboard. You know, when you're doing arenas and stuff. And I used to toss them out. Them and we had a Scottish sound engineer, David Kirk. Oh yeah, 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 great, great, great. You guys sound great, great, great. And I used to chuck picks out there and. You go, listen, you little bastard. If you hit me with another pick, I'm dropping your, you know, dropping your tone. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. So, but it's fun to throw picks, man. <laughs> a great, a great touring pastime. Right. Right. Joey, when, when did you decide, man, music was going to be the life for you? I mean, honestly, when, when did it hit you? I mean, it hits everybody certain times and certain ages and certain genres. What, what was it that made you get behind the guitar and start getting serious? It happened sometime in my 12th year of being on this crazy rock. Um, I've got two older sisters and one of them was into music quite a bit. And she had like Deep Purple Burn and, right. and you know, other shit like Cat Stevens and, and right. James Taylor. And she had Kiss and she had all these different, just a pretty wide, eclectic, you know, um, taste of music and i and my dad worked at uh at sony and we had this biggest freaking turntable and eight track player and speaker set up in our in our house and uh, i literally robbie i know robbie's got a story like this we all do i literally put i think it was kiss alive on i didn't know what gene or paul were doing i was 12 and they had those rabbit ears you know the 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 rabbit ears you use for tv antennas remember that shit Oh, yeah. telescoping ones yeah. and I was in front of a big mirror and I pulled that rabbit ear down and pull it out like a microphone and boom I was in kiss <laughs> and I air guitared that shit and I think from that moment on that's what I wanted to do literally wow so anytime I see Gene or Paul I, I try to give them money thank god they don't take it <laughs> they've, got, they've got a little bit more than me Right, but uh, just to thank him for the inspiration, you know, and I it went on to different bands. I got into Priest and Maiden and Cheap Trick and eclectic stuff like Joe Jackson and Blondie, and I got into everything, man. Just any music, I dug it always. Absolutely. How, how did you start on guitar? Then what? What was the? Uh, what started you? I mean, actually, get your first guitar, first band, that kind of stuff. Fifth grade, right around that time, I was in fifth grade, and there was a teacher at my at my elementary school that taught you know cat gut string guitars like stuff like feeling groovy and summertime and stuff like that where i you just sit there and learn those tunes and then i got one of those and and learned that way and then immediately i started a band probably around 13 with one of my best friends jeff brooks and then we got a drummer from from school this guy jeff perlman we couldn't find a bass player so it was two guitar players and a drummer yeah for a long time and then we finally got a bass player and a singer you know how it works I you know? same so, thing, yeah. that's how it ha- and then you just you know we we played some covers in that in that band like cheap trick and priest and some maiden and stuff like that but we didn't um 
we played some originals too at that time. So I was just, you know, it was full on, full on going on since 12, 13 years. And where was this at? Where were you at? Irvine. Irvine. Okay. Yeah. You know what, you know, like the 405 in Culver. Yep. That's where I grew up. I, I, I was born in Indiana and then my parents moved here in 72. Hmm. So 48 years ago. Oh shit. <laughs> um, right. That, yeah. That's not too far away from you, Rob. What's that? He's the the Irvine area. Right yeah. around the corner from there. Yeah. yeah, I'm not in Irvine anymore. I'm in Yorba Linda, but we're like 20 minutes away, Robbie and I. I've been yeah. over Robbie's pad. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Book. So your house was musical? You're, you're, anybody in your family really into the music? or Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Just me, you know? I mean, when my parents would go away on a vacation on the weekend and leave us three kids home, I would literally... The second they left, I would take all of the furniture and shove it under the under the stairs, and my band dudes would show up, and we'd set the band up in the corner of the family room or the living room, and my sisters would roll the kegger in. Wow! And right. it was it was on, dude. Yeah, that's I mean that's old school kegger parties. Yep. You know, and and then and then when I got a little older, we would do that at friends' houses. You know. Um, so just this, I mean, it's the same story most dudes our age have, you know, yep. that's what we did. Yeah. Right. And if you remembered all of them, you, you weren't partying hard enough, brother. Yeah, I remember a few, but definitely not all of them. Yeah. I was having a good time. I was like 13 at a major party back then. And there was uh, bands, I, I don't know, Robbie members, remembers a place called Bangles. It was a club in Denver where yeah. everybody played. I played Bangles. Yeah, you remember Bangles, man? That was the place. Yeah. So I was way underage, but I was in there partying my ass off and I hid behind this bar counter and this cop comes up and he's like, what are you doing back there? I said, I don't know, man. They, they told me to hide here. <laughs> like, get the hell out of here. I was wasted. I was like 13 being. <laughs> hey, at least you were honest. Right? It was the place yeah. to play though, man. Everybody played through there. I, guess I yeah. saw some of the greatest shows I've ever seen in Bengals. Good times in Denver, Colorado. I love Denver. Yeah, me too. That's my hometown. Right on. Hell yeah. So, all right. So I'll share one of my favorite moments with Joey. Production, cue up that uh, picture that you've got with Joey and I. So I, I've done shows with Joey. I've brought Joey, sh Joey out for some shows, but I actually drove out to Dallas to Gas Monkey. You remember this night, Joey? Yeah, I sure do. We were lit, man. And then we were like, my son standing in the background there says, hey, can I get a shot with the whole band? And he was talking about a photo. And Robert's like, yeah, go ahead and take it down in production. It comes out with this huge bottle of tequila. <laughs> He's like, everybody start drinking. I don't even remember leaving that place that night, brother. <laughs> Our band, we have a good time. We're, we're responsible. We'll get up the next day and get business done. But we, we, um, we work hard and play hard. Hell yeah. It was a good night. Good night. Yeah. Robbie, show them some of that stuff that you got, man. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because I, I uh, had a band and we used to come out to California and play. And in our first um, time out here, you know, we got an ad in the band magazine and I've kept it all these years. But I look in the back of the band magazine and there's a couple bands that had made it. One would be Warrant, uh, uh, Poison, but the other being Warrant. But there's a Warrant picture, but that's 1986. So I'm not really sure who that is in there. I don't know uh, what that is. Yeah, it's on the two ends. There's Jerry's on one end and Eric's on the other, and the three guys in the middle. Um, no, Eric's Eric's in the middle. If you go left, okay, left of middle. The little the little guy's Josh. He's the guy I replaced. The middle guy's um, Adam, and the guy all the way over on the on the right of the our, my my left the picture's right is max and he was the drummer so that was before janie and steven and i were in the band wow and then what happened was i used to go around we play there like every couple of months and i'd pick up flyers and i had stacks of flyers and bring them back home and in one of the flyers and then the band had had a couple new guys i mean it started kind of advancing a little bit yeah there's jerry matt or jerry and then um janie Jo Jerry, J Josh, Janie, Eric, and then Steven. Wow. I'm glad Obviously. I missed that photo shoot. I didn't want to, I don't want to have to bear embarrass anybody. You know what I mean? Is she <laughs> going off those guns? <laughs> 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 
Yeah, it's yeah. funny because all these flyers and you know to have them all these years and the only two bands that anybody would remember would be that and poison i have a poison flyer their slogan was swallow this one yeah <laughs> that's before they made it everybody had a slogan you know but it's yeah, cool because i have a warrant flyer and i have a poison flyer all these years later in their perfect condition i keep it in my box with all my uh ours was our slogan was very inventive it was the horniest band this side of pluto Send your send your daughters to the show, Chuck. Did you live up? I'm sure, I'm sure the Me Too is loving that, right? Right. Hey, you know what, Robbie? You must be cleaning out your garage like I am because you're pulling up all this old stuff, and I'm doing the same thing. I got some crazy stuff I found. Yeah. In my garage, pictures of, of stuff I just things I forgot, you know, that we did, and it's it's uh it's fun, man, and it, it bumps some of it bums me out because it's some of it's with Lane, you know, and and it was just the great times with him and stuff like that. And you see those, and it kind of puts brings it home when when somebody's not here anymore. And it, it, so that's kind of a bummer, but in in a way, it's good to see those, you know. Yeah, to revisit it. So yeah. at this point here, you were obviously at this point you were the next guy in, and then the, the lineup was solidified. So how did that work out that you ended up in here and Josh ended up? out i mean i always like to remind the guys that when i got in the band we got a record deal so um but that's not why i mean i was just i was the last piece of the puzzle i mean like you know robbie i mean a band, this is the best some guy i totally ripped this off i'd love to take you know responsibility but some guy told me one time a band's like five fingertips and they're all different right you got a singer over here the little guy you got you got the guitar players right here in the middle, the bass player and the drummer. But when you do this, you got a fist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So, you know, when, when, when I got in the band, I mean, it just, it just worked. Um, the, the, the lineup, everybody, the way we got along, the way we worked on stage, you know, just the different five personalities. I mean, I think if you got five guys, what's that? 25 different relationships going on. Right. <laughs> Something like that. Right. 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 We all know it's like being married to four people at the same. It's like people. polygamy, rock and roll, rock and roll, polygamy, whatever it is. <laughs> um, and it's not it's not always easy to navigate those relationships. But but, you know, some every band that gets successful, there's some magic about it. And no yeah. disrespect to anybody that was in Warrant prior to me. But um, that's, you know, it worked out the way it did. I think Janie wanted a different guitar player. Eric and I ran into something to each other um right across from gill turners on sunset and he told me hey we're looking for a guitar player and J eric and i had been in a band down in orange county like a year and a half two years before warrant was started hmm. my relationship with eric way pre-warrant and uh i knew they were doing well in la and when they asked me to audition i was living in la and i was trying out for bands and i'm like yeah let's go you know yeah and so I had a week or two to do my homework and I did my homework and I showed up at the rehearsal and nailed it and got the gig. Wow. I think we got a photo of early Warrant with you, Joey. Let's see if uh, production could bring that up here. Real quick. <clears throat> Look at that. Look That's at probably those. like 89. Wow. Look at that hair. Huh? All right. Look at that hair. Sexy bastard. <laughs> So you were in a band called Nightmare 2 before, weren't you? That was the band I was in when I met Eric, yeah. Nightmare 2, like 1979-ish? Probably when I was about 15, yeah. Wow. You know, back in the day, you put you put um, ads in the recycler um, magazines and, and you, know, you know, guitar player looking for drummer or whatever, and there was an ad in there. We were looking for a singer, and there was an ad in there that said, Rotten Singer Looking for Rotten Band. And it was this guy that went by Rotten Rod. His real name is Dennis Carlock. He's in, he's in, believe it or not, Coffin, Illinois. Um, great guy came and and he, how can you not answer an ad like that? Rotten, right. you're looking for rot, you know. I don't have to be good. I'm going. Dude, he came to my parents' gig uh, house to to audition, and he rolled up in one of those old Ford Econoline panel vans, and it was painted flat black with skull and crossbones on the side. Nice. before we even heard this guy sing we're like he's in you know? right he had the van for the gear <laughs> uh you know and we did but, but anyways nightmare two we jammed and i think we um, ended up making uh i did 
my first time ever in a recording studio at like 15 we did three songs there there's a record out there there's songs out on the internet you can find them there's uh one called going insane promised land and cold reception those are the three ones i actually wrote the music and he wrote the lyrics and there you go nice brother so you're writing music at 15 yeah and eric was when he heard that band he's like i want to join this band and this guy named daryl who who this black guy that dressed up like Hendrix was at a rehearsal wow. place in Anaheim, California. And he comes up and he goes, Hey man, you guys need another guitar player. My friend wants to check it out. And I go, well, what kind of gears your friend have? You know, this is the kind of questions you ask when you're 17 and 18 or whatever, 15, 16. He's like, uh, you got a Marshall half stack and a flying V. And I said, fuck yeah. Have him come on down. Right. And in walked the skinniest, Dude, I've ever met in my life, Eric Turner, he probably weighed about 95 pounds. And, <laughs> and he plugged in, and I think we played Parasite by Kiss and maybe nice. Rats in the Cellar by Aerosmith. And I'm just like, great. We jammed, I, I don't know, four, five, six months. But he wasn't on the recordings. So that's how the tie between me and Warrant works. And that's how I got in a few years later. So it predates, way predates it, really. Yeah, at least a year and a half or two years. Oh, okay. He was in a band with Izzy Stradlin before he was in a band with me. Izzy was down in Orange County at the time, too. And Izzy went up. I think they both went up to L.A. at about the same time. Hmm. I guess Eric picked the wrong band to be in, right? (laughs) 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 He could have been in GNR. Oops. Anyways, just joking. (laughs) Ouch. Well, you left music altogether, dude, in like 1985 to go get an associate's degree in electrical engineering. No, I got my ASE in 83. 83. Before Warrant. And then I left the band in 95, 96 to um, go to, get, number one, get sober. Er, sober er. Right. Um, <laughs> that's kind of funny. And, uh, and I just was lost, man. I was going through a divorce. The band was, you know, I bailed the band, obviously, and I didn't know what to do. And my dad, who's a retired uh, executive, Go to school for computers. So I went to school for computer engineering. I did 50, about 50 plus certifications for desktop applications like Excel and Word, PowerPoint, things like that, up to the up to the you know advanced level. And then I took the MCSE, Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer courseware, and I I passed the test and I was an MCP plus I and I worked as a worked as a tech on the phone fixing databases like mid-tier enterprise resource planning databases. And then I worked for a company for a while and was their database analyst and, and or admin, whatever you want to call it, DBA. And then the band came calling back and out the door went IT, but I have mucho respect for IT staff. And I mean, you know, we're sitting here in different cities and states. And here we right. are talking and mucho respect to the computer nerds out there. Yeah. Sure. But that's what I did, yeah. Wow. What, a, what a change in lifestyle to go from 10 million albums to work in IT and, and, and phones and, and it had yeah. to a crazy change. Very sobering. You know, I had a young daughter at the time and I just wanted to be a good dad. And, and uh, you know, I had fun in music for like eight, like ever since I was 13, obviously up until 30 about, I guess that would have been. 90, no, I was probably 31 when I split. So it was, it was, uh, I thought, okay, I'm done with that. And I'm just going to go be a normal dude. And, uh, you know, no matter how much you scratch that itch, man, that you, you got when you're 12 years old, it just keeps falling back. And when it does, and it's the right time. I mean, I really got out of it because it wasn't fun for me anymore. I was just wanting the money and I didn't care about the gigs. Right. And uh, I was kind of lost and I had to do my own thing. It wasn't against anybody in the band. I wasn't mad at anybody or anything. I just had to get the fuck out of Dodge and get my shit tight. And I right. did. And when it came back, it was the right time. And here we are late, about 16 years later, I've been in the band, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. A total tenure, about 20, 24 years, six records, you know? It's almost Great. like Def Leppard, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you a, go. Record, a record every five years or something like that yeah something crazy like that hey our producers have a couple questions from the audience let's go ahead and bring in a dub here for a moment 
and see what we have for Mr. Allen here. Hey, A-Dub, how you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? We're fantismal. <laughs> Fantastic. On your Monday evening? Absolutely. So you have a couple questions for Mr. Allen here? I do. I have two questions for him this evening. The first is from Hunter Zach, and he is apparently a really big fan and wants to know where you got the maple wood or rosewood that you used for the double neck fretboard that you have, and that is the coolest one he's ever seen. Nice. That guitar was made by BC Rich um, when Bernie Rico owned it. Bernie Rico was the original owner of BC Rich that I know of, um, you know, with the bitches and all. I, you probably, I don't know how much car history you know, Robbie, but Bernie, did you know Bernie? Or any I of those know. guys? No. So um, he owned BC Rich, and and um, BC Rich had had uh, endorsed Poison, and we were like, "Fuck, maybe they'll give us some guitars." So we went down there and met with them, and we were doing well in the club circuit, and they they signed us up, and um, they made that guitar and that guitar. We just had a, we wanted to do crazy stuff, so we did a split. Somebody was probably smoking some weed or something. <laughs> Not that I endorse it, okay. It's legal, so that's okay. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, <clears throat> somebody had the idea to split split a fretboard. And I'm like, if you guys can do that, great. You know, and so we made that that, that uh, guitar is called the Spy vs. Spy guitar. It's got the Spy vs. Oh. Spy nice. um, a cartoon on it. And um, a guy named Dan... Lawrence painted it. Dan Lawrence owns GMP guitars now, and that's what the guitars I play now. So it's kind of full circle for me and Dan. We've known each other since I worked at Jackson back in 1985. Nice. So that's been 35 years. He's been a friend. He makes some fabulous guitars. I think Robbie's got his hands on one of my guitar once or twice. Yeah. They're uh, they're big logs. They weigh about 10 pounds, but um, oh. you know. So that guitar was a lot of fun. That's a cool question. That's where it came from. Nice. Rich. Awesome sauce. Well, thank you so much. The last right. one I have for the moment is if you could have a question, a conversation with your 20 year old self today, <laughs> what would you tell your 20 year old self? Probably the same thing. Any, any musician with any amount of success would save your money and don't get married. <laughs> <laughs> now, Granted, I'm happily married, and I love my my first wife, which is my ex-wife. We get along great, and I have a beautiful daughter, 28-year daughter, and, a, and an eight-year-old son. But um, no, those those actual that actual conversation happened between all five members of Warrant and Eddie Money in like 1989. Oh, so y'all just it has recirculated to the rest of us. We just now got it. You know, it was good advice. It was good advice I never took, you know? So well, that's, no. that's what Eddie told you? That's what Eddie yeah. told you? Yeah, absolutely. And he was probably married at the time. No disrespect to his wife, you know? Um, but Eddie, we toured with Eddie for about two weeks. And uh, I'm a huge Eddie Money fan. I mean, that, those first two records, uh, Life for the Taking and, and, you know, and his first record, just, just huge huge record great great songs and and jimmy lyons the guitar player was shredding right you know really good yeah. stuff yep hell yeah well thanks dub we'll see you here in just a few minutes all right so we've got all kinds of comments coming in here ramon Lo lopez said uh, joey and robbie absolutely my two favorite guitars ever becky capone says joey she's certainly glad to see that you came back to music I uh, wouldn't have been the same without you, but I guess music really doesn't ever leave you, does it? No, it's like it's like a sec, it's like a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> That's herpes. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming back. It's a gift you can't give back. Right. All right. So obviously, we're having to talk to Janie Lane. Production, go ahead and bring up that picture of Janie for us, please. I know. Uh, Music has been awesome. It's been great. There's also been some hardships involved. Um, of, course, of course, 2011, we lost Janie. Um, what a great man. Great voice. Incredible voice. Looking great there in that picture, by the way. Yeah. He was. No, he looked really young there. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm sure that was a very difficult period of time for you. Yeah. I mean, 
for, you know, I can only speak for myself. I mean, us guys in the band that were in the band with him back then, you know, I don't want to speak for those guys and, and but, but it probably mirrors a lot the way I feel You know, when you, when you lose somebody in that way, it, it you know, the way you grieve is private. Um, it's nobody's business. It's, it's, uh, it's a private thing, you know, it's like losing a brother, you know, yeah. regardless of, of, you know, when you're in a band, like I said, it's like being married to four other people. It's just, there's, there's fantastic highs. And there's, there's also some fantastic lows that, that aren't, aren't fantastic, you know, but you balance all that and you still love one another, you know, at the end of the day. I mean, it's not all about anything but making music together and entertaining people and and, um, and I had a great time with him it, it it was a shocker it was horrible that that he passed um, you know I, I mean I thought because he had been told so many times stop drinking stop drinking it's going to kill you it's going to kill you it's going to kill you we had sober coach out on the road during the reunion tour we we had a totally dry backstage which Robbie knows my band well there's no He's never been to a warrant show where there's been a dry backstage. <laughs> I'm not enough riders for you guys. I know that ain't right. Yeah, and I mean, we're not irresponsible, but, you know, everybody everybody doesn't, we don't overdo it, but he just had a problem, so we kept it good for him, and and just whatever triggered triggered it, it didn't work out. The reunion thing didn't work out, and, um, you know, the last time I called him before he passed, I Mike Fazano, who was a drummer from Warrant long ago, called me and said, hey, let's go take Lane out to lunch. And I just called him up. I said, dude, you know, me and Fazano want to come and take you out to lunch. You know, everything's cool. Let's go. And he never called me back um, for whatever reason. And then I saw him at NAMM that year. Um, I was at, I was working at the Pearl booth, as I do. And, um, and, and somebody like a, an example executive at some company said there's your boy and I turned around and I saw him standing there and I kind of nodded at him and he kind of nodded back and that was it you know wow. that year he passed that was 2011 and I that's the only thing that really eats me alive is I didn't go over and just talk to him and give him a hug you know but I was getting ready to go into a meeting and and you know I was in, I was working um but you know talking about the grieving process it's it still goes on I mean I was picking out pictures of the guy the other day while I was cleaning out my garage you know you just you got to sit down and you have a private moment and that's exactly what it is it's private but um he's missed um he was a monster of a songwriter um when he was at the top of his game I don't I don't think there was a better singer front man in the business and uh, we had a great, great run together, and, and he just missed dearly. You know? Beautiful. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Just the other night, I was watching a, a live Warrant show. Uh, it just popped up. I was on YouTube. I think it's from 91, and, and you guys, it was really good. I mean, a lot of energy. He was, you know, you guys really, like, you know, a lot of energy. And he's banging his head. I'm going, man, it was heavy, a lot of heavy tracks and stuff. I'm like, whoa. I don't remember being this much heavy stuff back in the day, but there was, it was, pretty kick-ass i'm pretty sure it was 91 and he kept going there's 17 million people watching i think it was for uh, like um not hbo but some pay-per-view yeah we did it at the cajun dome in lafayette louisiana that's a good one to watch that was, that was that's, it that's when he was at the top of his game and yeah we all were i mean we were still hungry it was the cherry pie tour right we were headlining arenas it was it was a lot of fun and he he was really good man yeah, you know, it was. If, you know, as well as I do, you know, Robbie, you know, like you play with a guy that's got an iconic voice that you just hear him say hi and you know it's Jack Russell. You know, it's just those guys are one in a million. And, you know, thank God we've still got some of them with us to entertain us. Um, I'd yeah. love to play a gig with Lane. I have a great time with Robert, don't get me wrong. Robert does does the old material justice times a million he's a great guy and he takes it very seriously but it'd be great to see lane man he is yeah. missed yeah and i mean you guys still you guys definitely have a chemistry there's no question when you guys get together there's just there's you know there's a magic that's there i mean every time we play with you guys i always stick around and watch if unless we're leaving if we have to go you know how it is if you have to travel we got to go we got to go but you know you always see me out there when you guys play i'm there every time 
it's just yeah. a lot of fun. It's entertaining. I just like watching you guys play, you know? Well, well, thank you, Robbie. I come out and watch you too. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, dude. Yeah. You're, dude, I didn't know you were on, you played in fight with Halford, right? Yeah. On that. Did you want, we're on that first record. I wasn't on it. I did the tour when Russ quit the band. Okay. They hired me to do the tour. Dude, I'm a huge Judas Priest fan. Like, I don't get out of my house to go to any concerts. And and Priest played with Deep Purple and, and Irvine. I don't know if you were at that gig or not, like two years ago. No, I didn't see that one. And and uh, Ian Ian Pace is a Pearl guy, so he took care of me. And I, I was I was like four row center, and Priest came on before Deep Purple. And my, I mean, I miss KK Downing and Glenn Tipton. But those guys just crushed it. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, I was like seventeen again, full horns in the air, <laughs> beer drinking, just screaming my lung. It was just, it was that feeling we talk about, you know, for live shows that you get when those lights go down and you're excited. You know, yeah, like no other feeling in the world that we got to get back to as soon as it's safe to do. You know. Yep, that's it. That's what, it brings people right back. That's the power of music. It brings people right back into that feeling of where they were when they first heard or saw or whatever it was. You know, it's, it's every time. Yeah. yeah, but hats off that you played with with uh, with Halford. I just kind of got a that kind of got a Halford vibe going on. Hey, right on. <laughs> Minus the tattoos. <laughs> right. you know, I actually recorded with Eddie Money a little bit too. Um, back in late nineties, did a bunch of demos with him, which was super cool. Cause the guy was just really, really good to me that the fact that you brought him up was kind of cool. I thought I, I, he was just a really nice guy. He was really nice to me. And I always appreciated how he was. Yeah. I did a gig with him, I think in 2017 in Chicago and I went and knocked on his trailer and he came rolling out, Joe, yeah, 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 you know, a total yeah. Eddie, you know, and we had a nice conversation and took a picture. I introduced him to Robert time and, and it was good to see him it was definitely another loss man yeah i was pretty sad when i heard he had passed i thought man you know but at that time he he had came, went to the doctors and he came back it must have been 98 and he goes the money man's on his way out this is 98 and he's telling me and i'm going huh and he goes i got emphysema and he's smoking i'm going maybe you shouldn't smoke yeah. <laughs> and then he had a big bag of weed like really good weed <laughs> you know it's like he's got the cigarette he's got the weed i'm like Okay. He did it his way, man. God bless you. He did. Yeah. He's got some beautiful music, you know, to listen to, you know, now. So it's killer. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Rafa wants to tell you, Joey, that Dog Eat Dog is one of the heaviest, most kick ass albums that he's ever listened to. So props on that. Very cool. Thank you. That was a fun one. Yeah. The dog, as we call it. The dog. You know, every dog has its day. I mean, that record was the third one in. We changed producers, went with Michael Wagner. We um, did most of it at um, a place. What was it called? I'm trying to think. See me looking. Da, da, da. Morris Sound Studios in Tampa, where like Death Angel and all these heavy, heavy, heavy. It was, the, it was like the, the death metal studio headquarters. Wow. And we pulled an old SSL in there with some Studer machines and we, we made it there and it was, you know, talk about some good weed. I mean, it, we were in Tampa for like six weeks and we recorded six days out of that. I was always the first one in the studio. Michael Wagner, we stayed in these condos um, in Tampa and we found this club called the Rocket Club. That was a club everybody played. And we made a deal with the owner saying that, hey, we want to come in here and drink what we want to drink for six weeks while we're making this record. And at the end of that, that last week, we'll let you put a show on sale and you can take the door. And he's like, OK, great. This guy, Fred Gupala was his name. He was this Indian dude. And uh, we went in there six, seven nights a week, dude. And we drank and drank and drank. And at the end of the time, you know, we did the show and it was, went up, sold out in like 10 minutes, whatever. And it was a good time. Um, but Tampa, Florida, that was a good record to make. A lot of fond memories of that. Michael Wagner, the dude ski. Uh, Michael's done cream CDs. He mixed Justice for All. He mixed, uh, he did the first two Skid Row records. Just got a great track record, Michael. Michael's in Nashville. 
still doing well. Oh, very cool, man. I think we got a couple more questions coming in from the audience here real quick. Let's get the production back into the studio here. Let's see if she's here. All right. Hey, Dub. Hey, Dub. There you Turn are. the mic on, hey, Dub. The mic's not on, babe. It's yep. like, there it is. Now it's off again. It's off again. Hit it one more time, W. Okay, I did. Is that better? There okay, we're never hiring you as a monitor engineer. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no career with Warren upcoming. Oh, well, that makes me very sad. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, we'll give you a shot. All right. Redemption. What you okay, got? Okay, well, I have one comment and one question. Go for it. My comment is from Rafa. He said you had a BC Rich guitar that had Felix the Cat on it that he absolutely loved. Got some good and the question there. is from Dana Selby. She wants to know if it's true if y'all actually wrote the lyrics to Cherry Pie on a Pizza Box. Janie Lane wrote the lyrics to Cherry Pie on a Domino's Pizza Box at like 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. Yes. Seriously. In like 20 minutes. Wow. There you go. Somewhere, somebody's got that pizza box somewhere. I think it's in like a hard rock or something. But yeah, that's that's a true story. That Felix guitar was a lot like the Spider Spy. I'll go back to that one real quick. It had a split fingerboard, um, alder body, cool. I used EMG pickups back in the day. It was made by BC Rich as well. And then, uh, but the the uh, the Cherry Pie song, we were done with that record, second record. It was going to be called either, I think, Uncle Tom's Cabin or Quality You Can Taste. And um, the president of Columbia Records came in and said we, they had just signed Aerosmith. And they had put, that, they put the, the CD out with uh, Love in an Elevator on it. Right. And Donnie Einer, the president of Columbia Records, called Janie and said, you know, your record's great, but it needs one more hit song on it, you know, or a hit song on it. You know, something like this, love in an elevator, you know, and 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 uh, Lane pinned cherry pie, and it changed everything. I know later on he said, "I wish I never wrote that song," but he was fine right. with it. Trust me. Right. It's Thanks, a lot of fun to play every night. It's nice to have a hit, you know. Right. And then everybody remembers you by. There you go, the cherry right. pie guys. <laughs> So why did he say he, he he wished he never wrote that song? I think he because he you know it would, with any songwriter that's I mean he was really pro prolific if you listen to some of the stuff he did you know Doggy Dog or some of the acoustic stuff he did he was a great writer and I think with uh with any any songwriter when you're known the biggest thing you're known for is the catchy you know, riff with the girl in the video and it's, right. it's, it's really tongue in cheek. The whole thing was tongue in cheek. It was meant to be fun, you know, and it was fun. Yeah. But um, I think because it kind of defined him, it, I, he probably rubbed him a little wrong because he would let, much rather been known for the songs that weren't hits that were just amazing songs that never got a chance. Right. But just guessing, knowing him well enough, that's probably pretty close to it. But he, trust me, he didn't mind it every night when people loved, wanted to hear that song. And the older you get, you know, you, you understand what it's all about, I think. Right. So, yeah, he, did, he didn't go to his, his, uh, his resting place hating that song. Uh, I know as a DJ, brother, and being in a classic rock station, it's one of the most requested songs ever. I mean, honestly, I've played it thousands of times per request. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about ever. I'm sure there's a few songs out there from bands like the Beatles and Queen and <laughs> ever but maybe for Warrant you know for sure right and if you if you were working in a strip club Jerry, I did I did then it was my most requested song it was now on stage three we have Cherry <laughs> <laughs> I think we even got Motley beat for girls 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 on that one I'm yeah sure you don't like that much I think you do too. Hey, Brenda Preston wants to know what is your most embarrassing moment on stage? 1987, the Country Club, Reseda, California. Opening song. I had these really cool black platinum leather pants. 
And uh, I came out on stage and we did these big jumps, like these old the Ed Van Halen jump where your feet go scissory, you know? Right. <clears throat> and I didn't know it at the time, but these cool platinum, platinum leather plants or platinum, patent, patent leather pants, sorry. Getting all those words mixed up. Um, ripped literally from my ass crack all the way around to the front. Oh no. Get, puppy. <laughs> Get done with this, dad. I want to take a walk. <laughs> but um, so my junk was hanging out and I had no idea you're playing. <laughs> and and you're, you know, you're up like five feet on the stage. And I remember this girl, her name was Gina. She was a fan. And she was just looking up at me smiling, and my junk was just hanging out. And I finally looked and I'm like, oh my God, my junk hanging out. <laughs> and I ran around back in my tech Val Jean, R.I.P. Val Jean, I miss you. Um, I'm like, dude, you, you got to tape me up, you know? <laughs> and he's looking at it and he doesn't want to touch my junk and rightfully <laughs> right. so, but he's got duct tape. <laughs> so instead oh. of pulling the, 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 the ripped part of the pant and putting it over my junk and then taping me, he just taped me. Oh no. Like a tech would tape. <laughs> and I went back out there and I had this just, you know, covered with black duct tape for the whole show. And it covered my junk. And then after I came off stage, I literally had to peel that duct tape off. Oh, ouch. oh come on. Yeah, 87. That's when I, I want everybody to know out there that story proves that I started manscaping. Okay. <laughs> It also proves that you had to have a skin graft on your penis. So. It's just, no skin graft. It's just, I don't even, I might have a scar, but no, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, I would like to take responsibility for manscaping, but just it's come a long way now that people use razors and shavers and stuff like that. So the tape thing doesn't work so good. Robbie's going, duct tape. No, I was, I was actually thinking because uh, I'd seen you guys at the country club. I'm wondering if it was that show, but I don't think it was. You guys played there several times, I'm sure, right? Yeah, we used to play there on, we play there once a month or once every six weeks on a Friday and a Saturday night. And then we'd roll around and play like the Troubadour, the Whiskey or the Roxy on a Sunday. We do three shows a month and that was it. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Because we were doing a trip out here and we went to the country club and I know we saw Shark Island and we saw um, Hurricane and a band called a Rock, band. Rockney. Remember a band called Rockney? Yeah, yeah. They were pretty All cool. great bands. Shark Island, Richard and Shark Island. I mean, talk about where did Axl Rose get his moves? Richard and yeah. Shark Island, dude. He ripped him off hard. That whole thing, that's that's Richard yeah. from Shark Island, dude. That <laughs> oh, is, I'm telling you. That's what the guys <laughs> in our band were saying. They go, oh, that's where Axl took his moves. Of course, could have been Davy Jones. But I mean, but seriously, the, his moves, they're like, my God, they thought that guy was amazing. He was just, yeah. They were a good band, yeah. We we did a lot of gigs at the country club. Some of them we did with Racer X. It would be like there'd be like five hundred dudes up at the front of the stage during Racer X from MIT because they were just incredible. Paul Gilbert and, and Bruce. all those guys. Yeah. And then they they'd back off and we'd come out and all the all the girls would run up to the stage and we'd have like five hundred girls up at the front of the stage. It was always a trip playing with Racer X. Yeah. They just smoked us so hard as musicians. <laughs> Danny had the songs, baby. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's the difference there. It's like there's the chemistry of a band with music versus guys, you know. There's just, there's something that there's a, an, an intangible. You know, I played a show years ago with us. Uh, you know who Flotsam and Jetsam is? Yeah. We played with Flotsam and Jetsam in 1985 or 86, and they opened up before us, and they had three guys up at the front, hardcore in front of them. Then we played, there was just hundreds of girls and just right. the three guys were up there at first flipping us off and the Great. girls were all on them. Oh, my dear. I got them out of there. But it was just funny because it kind of like that, except for uh, Racer X had a lot of people. Lots of Jessam literally had three guys. That's when Jason Newstead was still in the band. Yeah. And look where he, he's, he's got a nice big fat ranch up in Montana somewhere right here. So he, him. And he, let me tell you, he was badass. That guy was he was no joke. Him and the drummer were incredible. I was like, man, these guys are amazing. Yep. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, Joey, I, I got to tell you, brother, my wife mentioned it. My most embarrassing moment on stage actually involves you. Uh-oh. What happened? So we were in Scott's Bluff, Nebraska, and I had you guys playing there, and we were doing the intro, 
And the guy that was running the MC with me, Nate, was supposed to go one direction with the conversation, talking about one concert, and he went a to total different direction and kind of threw me off my game. So he's like, hey, we got Winger coming up. And I'm like, who doesn't love some cherry pie? And you guys were standing right behind me on stage like, what the fuck? <laughs> I walked off. I slinked off the stage, dude. I'm like, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I think it's fine. What's that? You're, you're forgiven. All right, brother. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just lose Robbie? Uh, apparently, we lost Robbie some way. He's got pl- to plug his laptop back in. Right. Charge up, Robbie. <laughs> so you did the Joey Allen project for a little while. You still do yes. it? Pardon me? Are you still involved with that? Dude, I I just haven't had a lot of desire to do any solo stuff, but I might. I've been thinking about it. It's just a lot of work and you know, it's just a lot of work and I've got a family at home and I've got I've just got a lot of stuff going on. So it just really all depends on um, opportunity maybe maybe not you know Who right on. how many kiddos do you have brother two two yep one right. one grown but i have one eight-year-old waiting for me to get waiting for me to get off this interview so i can go swimming right on brother so apparently robbie's lost power so we'll have to finish this on just with us but we'll get uh, wrapped up here no i've got problem. seven kids brother wow no, dude you got a baseball team yeah, the last one is seven years old, and the oldest is 30. Wow. That's a stretch. <laughs> it is you, a stretch. You got me beat. Mine's 28 and 8. Nice, brother. I, it keeps you alive, man. It keeps you young having a little one around. Yep. It's awesome. Looks like Robbie's trying to come back in. He may or may not make it here. And, uh, Joy, I can't thank you enough, my brother. Let me see, hey, let me see if my little man. Hey, Callan. Come here, dude. Get my little man's face on here real quick. He, yeah. we, we keep it pretty private in life, but come here, dude. Come on in. Wave to Drake. There he is. Hey, buddy. Hair How- and eyes. Look at you. You look just like your dad. Let's do that. Yeah, dude. Right? Woo. All right, let's let you meet my son. Come here, buddy. Bringing the family in. Yeah, this is my little guy right here. What's mm. up? Give him the horns. There you go. (laughs) That's Dakota. Well, it's nice to meet you, buddy. (laughs) Oh, fish facing. They see you. (laughs) See you, little bud. (laughs) Is he going to be a rocker? I don't know, man. He's going to be what he wants to be. How's that? That's it, brother. Dakota always tells me, Daddy, I want to do what you do. And I say, no, you don't. Be something smarter than Daddy. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Being a musician right now is is a rough rough times so um hopefully hopefully we're still cultivating some it is a rough go joey my brother i i'm sorry we lost robbie but man i appreciate you more than you know man great man thank you for the opportunity it was a great time um i I love robbie dearly he's a he's a good friend and i'll reach out to robbie and say hi and talk to him privately but you guys are great i appreciate the opportunity as always and, and let's uh let's do it again We will. You know we will, my brother. I'll be in touch with you, and as soon as we get this crap lifted, you know I'll be putting you on the stage somewhere if I can. Right on, brother. All right, my brother. Much love to you and your family, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, buddy. Back at you, Drake. Much love. Be well. All right, right, folks. That's it, man. We lost Robbie. That sucks. So, all right, we're going to talk a little bit. uh, Oh, there's Robbie. (laughs) He just came back. Robbie, oh, Robbie, you missed the show, Robbie. Uh, I'm trying to get him in here, folks. It looks like he might he might be having some troubles. But anyway, while we're waiting for Robbie to come back in, big shout out to our sponsor, Backbeat Music. Cue that photo, Patrick. That's what I'm talking about right there. Alexandra and the team over there, Backbeat Music. Man, we couldn't do it without you guys. We love you. And thanks so much. All right, Patrick. Do we have Robbie back yet? Robbie is still in the joining phases here. He is having troubles with his internet, apparently. All right, let's not let's talk about those t-shirts one more time, buddy. Hand me that little t-shirt, would you? Thanks, my dear assistant man. All right, so we got the t-shirts. We just ordered a bunch of them. Hope you can see those. And uh, all you got to do is leave your name down in the comments there. 
and we will get in touch with you regarding getting your t-shirt order. We will be doing a photo of both Robbie and I, and it'll be signed, and uh, we'll have some fun with that. We'll get those out to you just as soon as possible. Looks like the t-shirts will be here in about two weeks. So we only ordered like 80 of them. So if you want one, get your order in and let production know in the comments. Or you can message the Hangout Live Facebook page directly. All right, last but not least, I told you at the beginning of the show that we'd be talking about who we have coming up. We've got some great shows coming up for you. So this next week, we've got Chips Enough from Enough's Enough, followed by Magic Moreno. Then... We've got Jimmy Cummings, actor, director, producer. He's going to be on here. This guy's got some serious movies out there. Been in uh, Southie with Donnie Wahlberg. He knows the whole Boston gang. He's going to be a great show for us. And right behind them, we've got uh, we've got Stuart Marriott. That's right. If that name sounds familiar, it should. He is part of the Marriott clan. He was the top male model in 1990s. And uh, uh, no, he's not here. And uh, he's also got some movies that he's working on, he, which I might actually get a role in. What do you know about that? And uh, he's got the Peace Project, and he and I are talking about the possibilities of putting on a huge concert, uh, kind of like a peace concert, where we bring in a bunch of bands, and the uh, donations or contributions go to charity and promoting peace and love. So... It should be a great time. I don't see Robbie back in now, so I'm going to sign off. As always, I've got nothing but mad love and respect for each and every one of you for tuning in with us and sharing your Monday night with us. And uh, I hope to see you again next week when we've got chips enough. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, whoa. Looks like he might be here. He's got to say goodbye to you at least, right? There he is. What happened, brother? Waiting for his audio to connect in. There you are. I can hear me talking in the background. What's going on, buddy? I'm muted. Must be muted. You're not muted. There we go. Okay. I can hear you. What happened? My computer died on me. Rookie mistake. So it's, it started kind of, I think the dog unplugged it and I didn't realize that it was a beep, beep, beep coming up and I was like, oh no. So, that sucks, brother. Yeah, and it's it's really running really hot right now. So anyhow, that's a bummer. I missed Joey at the end. What a drag. Oh man, I gave you a new computer even. I know, I'll use it next week. I, I did hear it because Jessica had it and she turned it on so I could hear what you were saying. And I'm like, and it looked like I was going to get back on and I didn't and here yeah. I am. I was trying to wait for you, but it seemed like he wanted to go swimming with his kiddo, which I get that. My kiddo's looking at me like, Dad, come on. <laughs> I'm sure Ella is, too. So it was a good show. Yeah, it was cool. It was, you know, once again, good. A lot of good rock and roll history, right? And Joey's a great guy. Yeah, we could have went on for hours with Joey with stories, man. Yeah. He's got a ton of them. He's yeah. got a ton of them. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, and it looks like you uh, updated everybody on what's coming up. I did, man. We got Chips Enough coming up next week. We got Ma Magic Marino the week after that. Magic Marino, in case people don't know, has worked with, I mean, so many people. Eric Clapton, Barbara Stra Streisand, Phil Collins. Uh, um, I think he did something with Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah. Aretha Franklin, he played with Aretha. That's where he got his start. Right. Um just so many people. I actually work, worked with a Magic recently, but I worked with him more than 20 years ago and did not know who he had worked with. And I was recording at his house one time and I look on the wall and there's these, this platinum album and I go, oh, Eric Clapton has his name on it. I go, oh, you worked with Eric Clapton, huh? He, you know, he does, he never mentioned any of that. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, no big <laughs> deal. Just Eric Clapton. <laughs> yeah. Right? But he's got a lot of good stuff. David Lee Roth worked with David Lee Roth. He's got a lot of good people he worked with. So he'll be good. And then you talked about the movie producer coming up and Mr. Marriott. And then after the week after that, Michael. Yeah, we got Michael from Foreigner the week after that, man. So it's going to be a couple good, good interviews coming up. We're just blessed, dude. We get like the best guests on here. Yeah. You know what? Hi, A-Dub. 
You just hey. popped up on the screen. We're kind of having a weird show tonight, aren't we? I don't see Patrick. Why doesn't Patrick just come back on the screen too here? Well, you know. We'll bring in the whole team to say goodbye. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys ready to kill this, Robbie? Yep. Oh, wait. There he is. I was sitting in the dark like a creepo. Hey, I bet I bet you were smiling from ear to ear when Joey said, I love IRIT guys. Yeah. Uh, computer geeks because I was definitely down for it. So for sure. I was wanting to chime in for sure. I was saying Patrick's probably loving that moment right there. Oh, All right, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, appreciate you guys behind the scenes and everything that you do. And Robbie, let's get Pleasure. you a better cord. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> hook up your computer next week. Next so I, I'll, I'll get on that so it's ready. Right. This one here is just, you know, I told you it's giving me troubles. I, I carried it all the way out there in my rectum from Texas to California. You know what that's like. And I, and, I, and I realized that was an easy feat for you, but you know, it was like, yeah, piece of cake. It was like, <laughs> man no problem. problem. Stop it. <laughs> you no problem. Computer. <laughs> I only, not only had I had my luggage in there too, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you rough riding. This went way too Pulp Fiction for me. Okay, I am not yeah. there. I was feeling like Christopher Walken there for a moment. I ain't gonna lie. So, honey, uh, God, you love it. <laughs> What's this thing? <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> All right, folks, let's wrap it up. It's from the Hangout team. We'll see you next week.